Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Heinz Gaming coming at you with the commentary and I'm just going to, in this video, kind of sum up what I went over last night in my live stream. Uh, but before I do that, I just want to say that I'm doing a live stream right after I make this video and also right uh, around 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So if you're available and you find this information really important like I do because it not only affects you right now, it affects you for the rest of your life. It also affects our entire generation and the generations that come after it. And it doesn't just affect America, it, inf it pretty much affects the entire world. So it's really important that this knowledge gets out there. If you want to help me get that knowledge out there, please let me know in my YouTube inbox. And what I'll be requesting of you is helping me advertise my 7 p.m. stream. I'm not making money off it. I'm not asking for followers. I just want to get the information out there so people can spread it around. Uh, so the reason I the reason I think the way I'm presenting this is a little unique is because I'm pretty much tying all this together in one kind of uh, one kind of narrative. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Uh, it's going to be about 10 minutes long here. So uh, get some popcorn or something, uh, but we're going to start right off. So I was writing this in my environmental philosophy class today, my voice crack, and uh, I call this the brief history of the war on the internet. Uh, and the sides are the Hollywood uh, people versus the U.S. or in the U.S. government versus the citizens of the world. So uh, according to a WikiLeaks cable that we just received, uh, in 2008 the U.S. State Department sanctioned a conspiracy by Hollywood, the MPAA, in an attempt to change a common law precedent regarding copyright infringement. What is common law precedent? Uh, getting your Miranda rights read to you, those rights you get told by a cop before they arrest you, uh, that was not established through legislation, that was established through a Supreme Court case, uh, and the, last, the guy's last name who was uh, in the court case, his name was Miranda, so that's why it's called your Miranda rights. Uh, so that was, that's a common law precedent, when something's established by law, by a, like a court, but not legislation. So, the MPA hires monitor, a monitoring company to scan the IP addresses of IINet, an Australian ISP, and basically they were scanning the customers of this ISP in order to find illegal BitTorrent piracy going on with, this, with the customers of this ISP. So, uh, after MPA uh, waits about a month and a half, or you know, a few months, uh, it sends a phone book sized list of IPs allegedly infringing on copyrighted material to IINet, demanding that IINet take action uh, by shutting their customers down, pretty much limiting their, their access to the internet. IINet refuses and says, uh, that's not right, we're not going to do that. A court case ensues and it goes all the way to the Australian High Court. Uh, IINet wins the case by arguing that they can't just cut off their customers by the mere accusation of a foreign film company. Uh, of piracy by a foreign film company, sorry. Uh, so, what was this trying to do? It was trying to establish a common law precedent to make ISPs responsible for their customers' illegal file sharing or copyright infringement. This means that ISPs would be forced to shut down customers on the first notice of infringement to prevent themselves from being liable uh, in the court of law. Also, it might mean that they would have to take detailed records of you in order to give the, re those records to prosecutors prosecuting you for a copyright case uh, just so they're not liable as well. So this failed, thankfully this failed, and that common law precedent never took effect. However, it proves to us that Hollywood is trying to change the law behind our backs. Hollywood and the United States government as well. And for all intents and purposes, the MPAA is Hollywood. I'm using them interchangeably here. So, a couple years after that, SOPA and PIPA pop up. And uh, those bad boys are not, uh, are not too good, uh, as we all know. Some key information on SOPA. Uh, it was written by Lamar Smith, a Republican from Texas. Remember that name? Uh, his largest campaign donations come from the music, uh, movie, and TV industry. And Basically, this bill is so bad because it allows copyright holders to bypass Safe Harbor, and Safe Harbor uh, was established in the Online Copyright Infringement Liability Limitation Act, part of the 1998 Digital Millennium Copyright Act. You don't need to know those two bills' names, but you need to know what they do. Basically, it allows for websites to hide behind the fact that it is required of the copyright holder to both find and formally request that infringed material be taken off a website. So that's why you can go to YouTube and not see a Star Wars a video, not see full clips of Family Guy, but instead uh, sometimes you might see a co copyrighted song, etc., etc. It, it all depends on if the, if the copyright holder discovers the piracy and formally requests it to be taken down or infringement and formally request it to be taken down. But uh, SOPA would say, no, 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 no. Not now the responsibility is on the website. So the website has to find the infringement, it has to take down the infringement, and if the copyright holder doesn't think that he does it, or the website does it, in a reasonable amount of time, they have every right to go to a court and get a judge to have a court order, to sign a court order to shut that website down. Uh, now that's not good, that's scary. 
Uh, PIPA is uh, the Preventing Real Online Theft to Economic Creativity and Intellectual Property Act. Uh, it is passed. It, it was almost brought to a vote on the Senate floor because it was passed in the Judicial Committee, uh, and it's it's pretty it's pretty bad here. It's, it was introduced by Patrick Leahy, a Democrat from Vermont, so we got some bipartisanship for one of the first times that I've ever seen. Uh, now this guy's gotten over three hundred seventy thousand dollars from the TV, music, and movie industry, over two hundred seventy-one thousand dollars directly from lobbyists, and uh, this bill, what it would have done is it would have pretty much shut down any site that enabled or facilitated infringement, such as YouTube, Facebook, or Reddit, 4chan, etc., etc. Any site that has a link to pirated material, or any site that shows you how to get infringed, uh, copyright infringement material, any, anything that can be viewed as copyright infringement uh, that a website helps you get to, uh, that website will be shut down in its entirety. So that, that's pretty bad. Now, both these bills got canceled uh, because of a massive January 18th protest. Well, they didn't get canceled. They, uh, <laughs> they got postponed. Uh, what our congressmen are doing right now are waiting for public interest to die down so they can either pass these bills once public interest dies down or pass these bills in different parts of legislation uh, without us knowing about it. So we got to keep up. We got to keep knowledge on that. We got to keep watching those bills just in case something comes back to bite us in the ass. And this is a way it can come back and bite us in the ass. I talked about the ACTA Treaty, the Anti-Counterfeiting Trade Agreement. It's not. It's not an end-all bill like everyone says it is. It's an international treaty with signatories of the U.S., Australia, Canada, Japan, Morocco, South Korea, New Zealand, and Singapore, with possible signatories from the EU, Mexico, and Switzerland. They're still debating on whether or not to sign it or not. Talks began in 2006. Notes on the talks have been classified with the meetings taking place in secrecy, and repeated freedom of information requests have been denied in multiple countries and by both the Bush and Obama administration, and they cite a credible damage to national security. That's right. A credible damage to national security at these notes on these anti-piracy, anti-copyright uh, treaties are released, if the notes on those are released. So... Uh, it was finalized in 2010, and uh, countries have until March 31st, 2013 to sign on to it. Uh, it has no official force by itself. What it does, it, was, it requires the signatories to, f to sign into law individual pieces of legislation that satisfy the demands of the treaty. Uh, and these are a couple demands of the treaty that are kind of scary. Uh, a demand signatories may or may not, depending on how the signatories decide to interpret the wording of the treaty, they may be required to recreate, create... Uh, laws that force ISPs to give up your info, browsing history, relevant financial records in a criminal copyright case. And we'll talk about why that's so scary in a couple seconds. Uh, Sentinels may or may not uh, establish laws, this is an opt-out policy, but still some might opt in, that require customs to search international freight or mail on the suspicion of con or containing infringing material. So guess what? No warrant, a customs officer can go through your international mail, find copyrighted material, and guess what? Yeah, he's going to send that to the proper authorities, and you're going to get that shit used against you in a lawsuit without a warrant. Uh, it also give you can also establish laws that give countries the power of to uh, sorry. Also, countries may or may not establish laws that give air, airport security the authority to search luggage or personal belongings, your iPod, your laptop, if they have reasonable suspicion of infringing material on those items. No warrant is needed, and any material they acquire can be used against you in a court of law without a warrant. That's pretty scary. Uh, now, SOPA and PIPA are considered ACTA-enabling legislation that can be brought back in order to satisfy certain clauses of the ACTA Treaty. Remember, the ACTA Treaty has no force by itself. It depends on how your domestic government, whether you're American, Mexican, uh, in any country in the European Union depends on how those governments decide to handle this. So some governments could have relatively lax laws, some governments could have relatively unrelaxed laws, depending on how they wish to satisfy the clauses in the treaty. So, SOPA and PIPA could be used to satisfy it. Now, this is a bill that could easily be used to satisfy it. It's called Protecting Children from Online Pornographers Act of 2011. This has gotten farther than SOPA already. It was proposed the day after our protests on the 18th. It has already passed in the House Judicial Committee by a 19-10 to 10 vote. That's further than SOPA got. It was introduced by the same asshole that introduced SOPA, Lamar Smith. Does that sound familiar to anyone? And guess what? This bill will require ISPs to store your information for 18 months, such as your name, your address, your IP addresses, your browsing history, your personal bank account numbers, and your credit card numbers will be stored for 18 months and can be used against you in a criminal court of law. Does that sound scary to anyone without a warrant? And guess what? It only takes an accusation to get this information. Not a warrant, an accusation. Yeah. 
So that's where we stand right now. I went into a lot more detail last night because I, I had a little more time. I don't want to make too long of a video for you guys, otherwise you're going to get bored. But try to watch this. Well, too late to tell you to try and watch this entire thing through now. But anyway, uh, yeah, so that's that's where we're going right now. Uh, I have links in the description for those of you that want to fact check me. And uh, also, my live stream's going up right now, so please uh, get in the live stream and let's talk about this kind of stuff. Uh, Heinz Gaming, signing off.